Get ready for hot takes and insight from local industry experts in real estate, business, and lifestyle. He used to play ball with the Padres. He played hockey for the Lobos. Now they're crushing it in the real estate game. Together, they'll showcase the best of the Duke City. This is All About You, ABQ. Welcome back. As you can see, this is not Skip, this is Tom. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, welcome to UABQ. Now, the goal of the show is to highlight the best of our city's industry, experts in real estate, lifestyle, and culture. So you walk away with some value and feeling inspired. Now, the way we like to do this is answer the questions you may have or interview the guest that you want to see. We invite you to join the conversation and reach out our email list and get some timely tips about our community and real estate market. I'm Grant Harvey, Vision Mortgage, Home Loan Expert. I'm Tom Kite. I'm a co-owner of the Copper Lounge here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, you may see Tom as a talk of the town, the cat's meow, uh, <laughs> and he's part owner of Copper Lounge, yeah. an extravagant, great, great Gatsby scene-ish type of uh, craft cocktail drinks. Fair and enough. And you guys know this guy as former Lobo extraordinaire hockey coach. Thank you, Tom. What a, what a warm welcome. Man, we have a lot to talk about uh, later on the show of Ross Anderson, uh, a skier who has set a world record, an unlikely story, guy who has a lot of philanthropies. Um, can't wait to, to meet him and, and, and learn about not only his endeavors in sports, but his, his, his charities. Um, and let's, let's talk about what we were up to, man. This is a, you know, it's a friendly show. Well, how was your weekend? What'd you do? No, oh, not much. You know, actually, I just got back from a business trip uh, on Sunday. It was just out in Phoenix. It was fantastic, 70 degrees. So it's, uh, the, the weather is pretty similar to what we have right now. Yeah. Got a l little round of golf in. I'm not too great at golf, but uh, it's always you good. You are to get good out. at golf. Don't let, do not let him say that. <laughs> he made me look terrible no last time we went to that. Yet, yeah. um, what, what I do want to make fun of Phoenix people, right? So they oftentimes will get on Facebook and just brag about their weather, and then you go, great. You're right. Now wait till you bake your brains out and uh, you never want to get in your car again and all your dogs die because it's too hot because it's a fiery inferno over there. Yeah, August, yeah it's you yeah. Phoenix people. You brag and you Pretty forget bad. about your weather other times of the year. Yes, your weather's great right now. The waste management tour, let's talk about that, right? Oh. Did you see that they removed the crowd? Did you see any highlights of that? That's a funny oh, outing. Yeah, people weren't able to walk straight. They <laughs> were falling into the traps and you know in the sand and uh, they had to cut off alcohol yeah, service at some it. point that play that has become i think hockey fans are actually more uh a classy than what <laughs> i see over there i'm not saying i don't love it there is one i think it's a 16th hole it's a it's a par three and and if the guys didn't hit it close enough to the hole boo they were booing people if they didn't get close enough to the hole i mean throw all uh uh, golf etiquette out there when it comes to that. Well, I think this was the first year that they finally stopped throwing water bottles at the <laughs> contestants, at the golfers, you know? I so. saw a couple times a guy like was a good guy and threw the golf ball and they didn't like his performance and they threw it back. Um, it looks like they just gave that ticket to the fraternity houses <laughs> because, yeah. or guys wanted to get back into their fraternity dates. I think they did. They probably used to work at Malone's. Mission accomplished. And that's another thing. I think we talked about this in the show. The way I know this guy, is we worked at this place called Maloney's when Central didn't have everyone get killed every three seconds, even though there was a fair share of crime. And so Tim, or Tim, Tom, T-O-M-B, um, Tom was a bouncer. That's where the B comes from, Tom B, Tom the Bouncer Tomb. He was a bouncer with me when we were 22 and got paid about 950 to put our lives at risk. Yeah, that's about right. But we're hard to kill. Uh, let's talk about the current state of the economy, um, Fed rates and, and, and crypto. Let's jump into crypto. And we, I love talking about crypto. Everyone is a self-proclaimed uh, crypto genius, uh, but I really am. Just kidding, I, I, I dabble, I do okay, but let's put up those charts, Mark. Crypto has it's been a crazy surge. Now, Bitcoin is the premier uh, crypto coin, and let's look at, don't look at how much I don't own. <laughs> That's <laughs> pathetic. There's a lot of zeros, but let's look at, let's chart the, this is in one month. We were at what, 26, 29, I don't know. My glasses are not serving me well. It got up to 71 at one point. Now it's resting at what, 66, 67,000. 
This was a coin that everyone said, ah, oh, you know, everyone can't wait to diss crypto that isn't in it. And they go, oh, that thing's not stable. It's performing. And it, it, I think it broke the record, right? It got to 71. Um, let's move on to the next one. The number two traded coin, one that I heavily believe in, Ethereum. Ethereum is a working model. It's not some you know faith-based system. Ethereum is how a lot of the internet moves, hosting websites. There's, it's a technology that's proven and working. Let's look at the rise of that, right? So we got, uh, gosh, even before that, it wasn't long ago, it was at 1200, right? 1200 got, and last night, I think it was like around 10 p.m. it, it hit it popped 4, off 4, like 4,100. Now it's resting at I think what 39,000 or 3,900 right now. So all those naysayers again, you only win and you only lose if you cash out, right? So right now everyone that hung on their coins, good for you. There's one more that's a fun one. Let's talk about Shibu Inu. Yeah, so Shibu Inu is kind of like Dogecoin, but what I think the entry level of it. Let's look at the decimal point. Point zero 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 three is when you start to own the, the, so you can get a lot of them. I mean, if you looked at me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Shibu Inu millionaire, 26, it's only worth 900 <laughs> bucks, but the, it's a fun coin. It's, and people say it's backed by nothing. It is, but as long as people are playing the game and it's, it is, it's backed by money. So this is kind of a fun one. It's, it's kind of a, 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 a marvel in today's economy that people go, you know what? I like a Shibu Inu, it looks, it's a pretty cute coin. So people are in it and therefore, you know, you, if you cash out or if you wait, I mean, it's a cheap coin. It's, I think it's kind of a fun one to play. You just kind of wonder how this is going to parallel along with, you know, AI's been around for a while, but it's really kind of coming to the market now yeah. more seriously. And so you just kind of wonder if those are things are going to parallel one another and one's going to, you know, you look at stocks like Nvidia and that's just, it's going and going and going. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just curious if that's going to help accelerate the, uh, the, the crypto. Yeah. And, and the thing is, we don't know. And, and anyone that claims to know is lying because crypto is fairly new. We don't know how it performs. I have read that it performs well in a recession, but we've only had one reception during crypto. So a recession. So it, it's, it's really hard to chart what it will do because it's so new. And I think it's going to it's, it's kind of a wild animal. And it'd be interesting to see where where it heads. Uh, I'm a, I, I believe in the long term play. I'm going to hang on. But uh, anyone that tells you, oh, well, it's going to whatever, it's pure conjecture. It's, it's definitely a volatile thing to be in. But if you do look at it over the p course of the past, say, three, four years, it has steadily grown. It's performed. It's There's performed. been some alt, we call them altcoins that aren't uh, major players and um, kind of are, are risky. And, and I've seen some fall on their face. I've, I've bought some. I've seen some on the rise. But some of the cheap entry level has, has made even young people players in this. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the GameStop. It, it was cheap for a while, so people go, "Hey, I'll throw my hat in the ring and end up performing." So you don't, you don't, you don't know. But it, I, I call them cheap lottery tickets. Hang on, <laughs> let's see if yeah. we win or not. I mean, the entry level is low, and but you know, dabble in about ten of them, see if they perform. But um, I think that I the, think, the odds of winning off of that <laughs> are probably better than the lottery, honestly. Yeah, right? that's that's true because I've never met anyone that won the. Have you met anyone that's won the lottery? You know, I, I was playing golf in uh, Tanawan and somebody pointed someone out. He's like, oh, yeah, that guy won the lottery about 15 years ago. I didn't know him, that, but that someone crazy? pointed to me. Six degrees, at, four degrees of separation. How, how it, up, but, yeah. like, I've never met anyone that won the lottery. Yeah. But you see old boys lining up and stuff. And you'll thank God it pays for UNM education. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I just go, what? You know? Yeah. So, you know. You know, props to the people who think they're going to make it. And, you know, I, I wish the best for you. I just won't be partaking. Um, let's talk about, oh, Grant, what did I do this weekend? Let me tell you, Tom. <laughs> yeah, we me. had a birthday party for my sister. And my sister loves parties. She loves sweets. She loves cupcakes. She loves live um, singing and performing. As, as, <laughs> so as a musician, I decided to uh, give her a little something. Mark, cue up, uh, cue up that video. Um, look at this. This is a song called Pizza Party. Now that's me on the keyboard uh, and on the mic. So it's a, it's a one man band, Pizza Party. So Sagios was there, but yeah. So my sister is good on the sax. She's the Bill Clinton of New Mexico. <laughs> and uh, the keyboard's so heavy, I have to strap it over my neck. Yeah, so Sagios came in and I decided, you know, I don't like to, 
I don't like to break that out. I'm kind of shy about uh, my musical talent, but um, your keyboarding skills are just top notch. By yeah, the way. I have. A, there's a lot of you the methodology the, to <laughs> yeah, it. The, yeah. You peel back the onion, and uh, you know that's on you what what you find. Uh, so let's. Uh, this this is by no way a good segue, but I, I wanted to uh, talk about uh, rates. And I want to go back to the subject. I did a mortgage minute on this before, but everyone is very aware of rates and it's either keeping people from buying or it's creating opportunity for people to buy. I remember when Cindy and I got a mortgage from you, yeah. back when the rate was negative. Well, wait, wait, tell them the rate, because <laughs> I don't want to brag. I but. think it was 1.9. <laughs> <laughs> they did a 10 year loan. It was unreal. I, was, I just wanted to frame that and be like, yeah, you know, if you want rates like this and bold results, not typical. But yeah, I think they got into the ones. It's purely remarkable. Um, let's let you know what. Let's with that, Tom. Good. That's a good segue. Let's get into the mortgage minute. So in this in this market, today's average rate is is at seven percent, uh, with I think a half a point origination. Um, when you're shopping for a loan, it's important to get a rate, and figure out what the fees and costs are. So there's not only a rate, but what are the fees associated with that rate? Is there a discount point? Is there origination? What's the underwriting? What's the processing fee? Again, that section A in your fee worksheet, your fee worksheet, because when you go to shop, you will ask for a fee worksheet. It's the most transparent way to compare lenders. Now, let's talk about discount points. I don't like them in this current market. I think that rates are gonna lower on their own. For you to put forth any money on your on your mortgage and especially a closing it is nonsense because you're going to be able to refinance in six to 12 months rates are certainly going to get lower and any money you put forth will will be a waste because you're not going to save that much money in the during before you can refinance the buy downs are a very popular uh thing there's the three two one buy downs so let's explain three two one buy downs on the first year three percent discount go to seven go to four next year 2%, you go to 5%, next year you go to six, right? So the, the first number is the subtraction from the original rate. Remember, three, two, one, buy down, seven minus three, you get to four. Every year it goes up 1%. These can be bought from 10, 15 to $20,000. A lot of sellers will offer this. Take that money, apply it towards your, your, your uh, either your principal or take it towards your closing costs because you are not gonna be able to take advantage of that discount. Just refinance later. I'm, I'm telling you, do not put any money forth. It, it'll be a waste. Seemingly, it sounds okay, but it's 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 a waste of money. I I really do project about tw six to twelve months. We're going to have lower rates, almost by uh, one percent. So, keep that in mind. Do not buy down your rate. That's your mortgage minute. All right. So on the show, uh, we, we we will be discussing and uh, going into the stories and endeavors of our, our man. Uh, Ross Anderson. Ross Anderson. Coming yeah. on the show. Yeah, I was going to give Thomas part. Ross Anderson will be coming on the show. Segment two. Thanks for sticking around. See ya. Segment two coming up. All right. Happy birthday. Uh, welcome back to UABQ. We're on uh, segment two. We have Ross Anderson. Terrific story. World record holder in skiing. Can't wait to get in this interview. Let's uh, let's break it open. Ross, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. So, first thing I gotta ask: Where were you born? How'd you get into skiing? How did you? I mean, one question at a time. But where did you where'd you grow up? <laughs> well, I was born in Harlem Air Force Base. Okay. So I'm a true New Mexican. Love it. Uh, native, as well, and grew up in Durango, Colorado. Okay. So, of course, in the mountains, that's where skiing is, and that's where I learned. Yeah. Um, started when I was three years old and started racing since I was six. So, basically, that's what my life was, was just mostly skiing. So, who, who put you up to the task? I mean, I mean it's, for me, I, you know, I played hockey. Obviously, you being in Durango, but, like, who went, you know what? I feel like this, this, this kid could go really fast. Was it your idea? Was it your parents' idea? How would you get introduced to going fast? You know, I just always did racing. Um, Kind of grew up with it. My dad raced and he was at, in college. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so that's kind of where it came from. Sure. And then I was always watching the Olympics, the Winter Olympics and all that yeah. stuff. And then being in a, a ski ski town, basically. Yeah. What, just, was it, pur is it purgatory or what's the, what's the, what's the, 
Purgatory. It's purgatory. purgatory yeah. yeah, they changed it to Purgatory, Durango <clears throat> Mountain Resort, back to Purgatory. I yeah. was confused. You know, there, I have a quick story. Not to, you'll, you'll laugh at this because I've been skiing twice. One time, findings fell out, borrowed someone else's. The second time, I went down I was with a bunch of hockey guys and so hockey players are supposed to be good skiers but it was my second time so I'm going down and and everyone's like Dan look at Grant go the thing is I was just trying not to die so it looked like I was some perfect like but I was just avoiding people thinking like right. dude please don't kill anyone please don't kill anyone for about 21 seconds so I can imagine what you do that as a, uh, probably I was an unguided missile you were a guided missile but I uh that was my testament to skiing. I was just trying not to die. I'm sure you probably try not to die, but with more skill. So let's talk about where did you go to college? I went to Fort Lewis and then the U of A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So did, you did, did, what was your event in skiing? What, I mean, did, did you do slalom or? I did all the fundamental sports. You had the slalom, giant slalom and downhill. Okay. Uh, that was basically where growing up, um, you know, downhill course was Funner, you know, okay. it was it was you get more speed out of it and whatnot. Then Let's you talk about slot. that. So that what what kind of degree slope is that? Sixty-five percent pitch. Oh wow. my! This looks like someone <clears throat> tilted the camera, right? I mean, for sure. Yeah, that's the you real would go. Well, something's up because oh, obviously this guy would be dead in the end, right? That'd be my take. But this is really this is re you're just crouching, but it's like a tilted camera. You're just flat, yeah. it's flat, really. So, <laughs> so you're trying to create the least amount of drag coefficient, right? If I understand Absolutely. that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so here you are. What it, what happened? What's this? This is the uh, world world professional championships over in Lezark, France. Okay. And that was my first major podium. Uh, to be second in the world for that. Wow. And that was done a while ago, 2001, basically. Holy but smokes. That's cool. There's about 80 <clears throat> plus uh, racers representing about 34, 35 countries. And so that was big. So, so, that, so that, that, that group of people right there, you're, they're called the slow pokes? Well, <laughs> yeah. So there was one before me and that was it, you know, but <laughs> the reality is, is, you know, they're all great co competitors. But, uh, That's very really, sportsmanlike really cool. of you. I would be doing more bragging, being like, <laughs> oh, I can finally see you guys from this podium. Right. Um, so do they, let me ask you this, in this contest, uh, hold on, Mark, don't zip through so fast here. Um, okay, and then that's the end of the pictures. Let's revisit, let's revisit picture uh, three. So when you win, is it time or is it miles per hour? It's speed. Okay. Yeah, it's all speed. Okay. KPH, technically, Okay. when right. you go down to it. Um, okay, so, so this is the same grouping, right? Yeah, it's the same. It, those are the top three. Okay. So first, so, second, third. So what, what, what was your mile per hour in that one? Um, I believe that was 123. Wow. Around there. It was actually terminal velocity. Oh, my God. So, so how do you build up? to do that i mean it reminds me of like some uh, like olympic gymnastics and you go well how did you not like you either had to perform or you die or the the ones where they go you know 80 million feet in the air how do you train for that how do you add on 10 miles per hour like what i tell you it's it's a mental sport it's it's physical sport it's everything yeah everything has to be put together in order to make it you know what it should be and that's looking making it look easy Make it look fast, but then have everything under control. Where would you, where do you train then? Because that's obviously not your average ski resort slope. Where do you go? You know what? At Purgatory, I actually had my own ski run towards the back of the area. Um, now you know you made it where they go, <laughs> no, that's Ross. Says everyone stay back. It's just like just these skull and crossbone stings and just this is Ross and see everyone else will die. So what, slow, what, what pitch was that? What was the degree pitch? Um, it was about the same, but it was a lot shorter, you know? <laughs> so what happens at the end? There's, you have a parachute, you have people playing Red Rover to catch you. Like how do you, how we do you We had hay bales and then that was it, you know? <laughs> Slam right into so, it. Yeah. So obviously you had to have had some biffs, right? We had a, well, yeah, it was a long field. It was a field. Okay. So it was a long run out, so you, enough that you can slow down and stop. Okay, what, so it, like it, it's, you've, you've probably tumbled a few times on these runs, right? A couple times. What happens? Oh, third degree burns to uh, it just, it just, it's a mess. It really is. I mean, I've fallen at 131 miles per hour before. Holy and I had third degree burns on the side of my uh, suit, my, that my yeah. suit melted into my skin. And so when Holy they went smokes. to the doctor, 
they used tweezers and literally got every bit of the clothing out that was melted in there. Let, let's, show that, let's show that. Let's show that. Show that picture of him going down, down uh, that, that 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 slope, that 65 degree slope. Let's show. Let's show that picture again. I would wear that to the club. <laughs> I like the way it fits. You know, it's a, it's a nice design. They'll let you in the studio. You know what? I'll, I'll let you use it, and then you let me know later. I would open up the club at the, bo like the bottom of that, and like every once in a while, we have my man over here just go down it, right? And then you go, hey, hey welcome to the, the, the 130 mile per hour club. But that, that's, a, that's a pretty nice looking outfit. Dude, you, okay, I gotta ask you this, just because I'm. Yeah. Um, do you design the suits, or like, how do they, who makes these suits, and you go, you know what? I wanna be, I wanna be red guy. Like, where do you get these suits? How much do the suits cost? Well, they're about a grand. Oh, okay. And it's in France that they make them. Uh, yeah. Know, Jonathan and Fletcher, a good friend of mine, George Passe, he's the one that makes them. I uh, thought you were going to say Christian Dior. <laughs> Christian Dior make mine. Okay, so that, that helmet, how much? That is a lot of money. You, after... you know what? I bet you the same kind of art that goes on hockey, like goalie mask, is the same as that. And I bet you, you need something in that caliber so you don't die. But who designed your mask? That's great. I don't know when it designed it, but I had an airbrusher from New York, uh, one of the top airbrushers. He did, you know, jets and planes and whatnot. And uh, gave him the idea and he made it what it is right you there. You kind of look like a spider. That yeah, is so, so obviously that, that, <clears throat> that, that eyelet is different than your standard mask, right? Because you're already, it's, you're already pointed. It's sealed, yeah. That's amazing. So everything's sealed, everything's up to your shoulders and to your back, so everything, yeah. there's no drag Do you whatsoever. see, do you go through, like, do you get in the crouch and have the wind, like, contours, like they do in, like, Olympic stuff? Like, did you have one of those done? Like um, I technically didn't. Um, I was the only one, really, in that top level that I never went into the wind tunnels or anything like that. That I means actually, that's because he's a badass. He didn't have to resort to that. So he's like, you know what? I'm just going to go win. I used a regular fan, though, you know, just, just your regular household fan, <laughs> just for a little drag just to see where my, yeah. uh, my fairings were. Throw a little were, baby powder were, into it. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to do, I'm going to pump your tires more into the bragging. Do, do you, at one point, do you have it or you had a, you made a, you did a world record, right? I have the all American record. Oh, and what is the miles per hour? 154.06 miles per hour. Dude, what? That, that's unsafe in a car? That's unsafe <laughs> in a boat? This guy's on skis. I so can't. how how long, how, for what amount of time were you going that fast? 23 seconds over a mile long. That's course. a long time yeah. to be going up. Damn. So does that, do you get acclimated to going that fast or is it is it like this heart beating? You do. You get okay. acclimated. You learn how to slow your pace, your your heart, and um, you visualize, and you're in that zone. Once you're in that zone, it's pretty cool because you really can't hear anything. Yeah. But everything's a little bit slower too. I'm sure. And yeah, you dial the in. coolest thing ever. So yeah. when you have just like ten state police just on the side with their guns, or how do they <laughs> measure you? And at what point? Like, how, you have to constantly be measured it like like well zapped, right tell you what so it's <laughs> at, all at the bottom so at the finish line there's a chronograph oh. and then 100 meters up there's your other chronograph yeah. so all that speed getting to that first okay. one that's where it starts and then it's the finish and that's where it tells you precisely how fast you're going so and like do you just pick a pathway and you're just stuck to that or are you making micro movements as you're are you steering your skis? I mean, you're doing a little. I mean, basically, what you're doing is your your hands are the rudders okay. of, of steering. You try to stay as flat as you can, and it, it, you know, at a certain Wait, point, it's just rough. Mark, show that picture again of him like frontwards, because I'm sure that we're gonna be able to figure out what he means by that. And I, I want to kind of break it down. The one where he's facing frontwards in his his custom um, helmet. I kind of want to dissect this. So, so you're you're saying that there's so much movement going on that the sheer this would this would steer you. Yes. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, so what? So what are you holding right there? That looks like you have two snow cones. There. <laughs> what, I love. And technically, it's, it's kind of like that. But I tell you, it's it, it's a cone that goes over your hand, so the wind goes over it smoothly. Okay. So just you're, like just, a, you're just no like snow poles or anything. You're just tucked. Well, those are poles. Oh, okay, okay. And it curves okay. around you. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Dang, I wish I had a picture of those poles. Um, again, look at that club outfit, dude. How would you? That is, Yeah. that's amazing. That's unreal. Like, you could kind of flex your bicep in there, too. 
A good one. Okay, so now, you, what, what year did you set that record? 2006. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, do you, is there a movement for you to, for, for me, I think the big movement, we call it hockey's for everyone, you have to be a good uh, liaison or uh, a good, uh, what would I say, steward for skiing. Do you, do you go talk and say, hey, you know, everyone here could be a skier. What, do you have this reach for people or you have this? I, I do. I mean, I've, <clears throat> it's more to the next generation it's, and it's not really about the skiing part. Yes, you can be a skier, but my message really is you can do whatever you want to do Great. in life. You know, uh, could be a teacher, professor, um, an athlete, yeah. anything that you desire, there are no boundaries. Yeah. And that's one of the things that, especially a lot of native kids you know, on reservations, they're for some reason that wall of, well, I can do it, but I don't think I can. Right. I'm not ready yet, or they're just not going out of their comfort zone. And I created uh, programs, kids programs back then. Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. So let's so, talk about your, 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 your philanthropies and your cause. So basically, um, when I first started this, my focus was really just being in the World Cup. Uh, athlete, just because there was nobody of color. You didn't see anything in the magazine, you didn't see any TVs whatsoever. And I wanted to look up to somebody. The only person I thought was Billy Mills or Jim Thorpe you know, for natives. Um, but there really wasn't anything for skiers, period. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> early age of, well, around 18, 19 years old, that's when I decided, you know what, I'm gonna just do it and not think anything about anything else but race. Race, right, race, race, right. race. So that's what I did as, as I started doing that, focus on that. And then it was more like a, basically like a seed of a, plant or a tree. Mm -hmm. So you, you put that seed in and your one focus is just going to get in that one stump, but you don't realize that there's going to be branches out. Those branches are going to be your kids programs or your public speaking or, right. um, you know, other things that go with it. Um, events and, and charity and all that comes yeah. to play. And those are the branches that kind of reach out that you don't realize yeah. you're going to be doing that. And you're going to, uh, talk to, you know, students that are pretty up and coming, uh, lawyers or ah. up and coming athletes or whoever they are that inspire, that are getting inspired to do what they want to do and realize that anybody can do this. Right. That's good. Not just a particular type of people, but really it's just anybody. Do you, so you have an organization or you have a GoFundMe? I, I know we kind of briefly touched on that. What, what Do you have an organization's name or like a cause or something that we can reference? Or I am going to have it. I mean, now right now I'm just, just right now I'm going to be on the U, U.S. Ski Snowboard Hall of Fame. I'll be Wonderful. A, That's fantastic. What a great yeah. platform to speak off of, right? I'll be the first Native American ever, full-blooded Native, to be inducted into the youth skiing. Congrats, summer. that's yeah. so fantastic. Making history at the same time this year, which is really cool. So of course it's, you know, what, getting you, that you fundraising. You might be asking, what, what tribe? I am enrolled Cheyenne Arapaho in Oklahoma. Awesome. Yeah. So so here's my thing with hockey, and I think you and I see eye to eye, and, and it goes further than that, because I, I actually, my parents never told me I could be a doctor. I, I didn't become a doctor, this isn't some great triumph story. But there's a lot of times where the kids never hear it, they never come up with it, right? right? So I think it's interesting where I think many many uh, Native Americans may have never thought about skiing. Mm -hmm. and, and you could put that idea in their head, but it, it probably was a, never a thought. And, and, you know, these people can get novel uh, new ideas from others, but they're not going to come up with skiing on their own, right? right? Just like a you know, Native American's not going to go, you know what, I'm going to take up hockey. When, you know, how would right. I get to hockey? But, but you showed a path about Here's how you do it. It's possible. Look at me. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a world champion. That's important. It's a great platform to use that and to catapult others. Yeah. And what a good mentor you would be, right? The local guy that could show him what to do. I'm sure it's inspiring. Okay. So good, good on yeah. you for creating and promoting the sport. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a long time since I've owned that record. It'll be 18 years. Uh, as of April 19th. Yeah, are you, so what, what is your, are you have the ability to go in to schools or have, have you have you tried that yet? Have you have you made some school appearances? I definitely have, yeah. you know, especially earlier, my earlier years, I did a lot of public speaking, 
to schools, to conferences, to um, private events, to fundraisers, yeah. you name it, you know, and I'm happy to do that, you know, that bring be, that message. Do, have you, have you come, have you known a Begay ever spoke? Cause, Cause I think you guys would be great in your own regard going, look, look yeah. like it's possible. Something that was probably uh, a, a, a white dominated sport. And then you go, it does, you know, you yeah. have a place. Right. Have a place. I wish I had a good, um, Native American hockey player to throw in the mix with you guys. Actually, I do have these guys from Alaska, from Juneau. They went from Mexico to Juneau, uh, to the, and 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 so that would be a good. But anyways, combining yeah. combining forces would be great. Have you ever thought about? Well, I did work with Nota. For okay. a while. we had the same sports agent during. Oh, my time, wonderful! So <laughs> That's great. There's, yeah, yeah. So we have some some times, and then you have Naomi Long, okay. uh, who's a ice skater, figure skater. Okay. Uh, she was in the Olympics, and so we've been kind of talking about that too. Yeah, to get a panel of you guys, to, yeah. it would just be, I think, creating that, like you said, a seed, creating that idea. I, I think some kids, I mean, you name it, there's there's white kids that never thought about playing hockey, so no one talked about it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just singled out to that, but I think it would be great to go look at how we've uh, you know, performed, and you guys are pioneers. And so I think that's very important to uh, express to and, and get yourself out there. A lot of times some athletes can go, got my fame and I'm out of here, but you pay it forward, right? I mean, yeah. And essentially yeah. your dad paid it forward. I mean, his son, but yeah. um, that's, you got introduced to skiing and, and, and yeah. no, no one introduced me to skiing. I'm not gonna say that I would have, I would have probably died uh, doing what you did. So maybe it's good I didn't touch skiing. From Tom you're, and I both know my now. frontal lobe hasn't developed still. But <laughs> have, have, you, have you had any kids that uh, wanted to take up the sport of skiing? Yeah, oh. and I've inspired some some people that are out there now, the racers that are going to Europe right now to go race. So we'll see. You know, that's, that's neat. We that's need to do a follow up awesome. on that because I would love to see I would love to see them. You know, just rock it out there and, and, and take it. And, yeah. and because it, you probably blew some minds, right? I mean, let's be honest about that. Like, you don't look like your average skier. No. And what a great thing to go. Mm, you know, it's, it's, it's an awesome thing to showcase, right? right. Uh, did you meet anyone that would like had that conversation with you that said, "Hey, well, like, where are you from? What's the deal?" Like, kind of really wonder about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you're, I'm not your typical skier no. period to go into uh, the ski resort, and then you hear all these people bragging about how fast they. Are gone. you on the top now? Uh, I was third. That was the uh, FIS World. World Cup Championships in Servina, Italy. Oh, I did, where, where are you? Yeah. This is your helmet, sir. Yeah, the bronze medal. I'm actually enjoying a uh, champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, where is you this know. guy? He's <laughs> actually, uh, yeah, deserved. he deserved a little for party time. All right, good for you. So another so, first for that uh, one. It, give me a, just, a, just a short resume of, of your top, well, so you've probably had a million of these, but your top five performances that, that were important to you. First, three, just getting well. First was getting into the World Cup period. Yep. You know, qualifying for that, not even realizing that I would even be here at yeah. this point to um, enjoy. But then, you know, in 2001, when I got number two in the world, you know, yeah. number two in the world, huge, right? With all Europeans, you know, top skiers in the world. Yeah. And there I am. So that was really cool. And I, I like the fact that not only did you do that from an unlikely story, but you didn't have all the thousands of dollars that the other guys were throwing at, right? You're just, yeah. you just, you were an athlete and just did it in a raw fashion and one. And I love that story. I love the guy that um, didn't have as much bucks as the other one and still pulled it out, so. Well, yeah, you go to your local community and businesses and ask for, you know, sponsorship, donations, anything that you can and to support what you're truly you know, doing and yeah. it worked. <laughs> that's one. That's wonderful, yeah. man. What a what a good story. Is there? Do you have a link? Did we have to, did Mark? Did we have a link for him, or did we have something that people can go contact you or reference? Because I'm, I'm sure this show has some reach, and I would love, you know, maybe yeah. maybe there's a kid that goes, I don't know, I'd like to go. We'd be surprised how many kids watch this show, despite Skip's best effort when he uses foul language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's okay. There you go. That would, that would be neat. I'm sure someone's going to inquire about that. I think th I think this story is going to hit someone and go, oh, yeah, maybe. Can Getting my website back up. I've had that name, rossanderson.org, yeah. for a while. So we're working on new stuff. Yeah. You do you know? think you can have, do you, are you working on any scholarships or something that can maybe subsidize like a, a skier that didn't have the money? 
Eventually. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. That's a good movement. I mean, working on the book, you know, doing that, getting the kids program, hopefully up and started okay. again. You know, the pandemic kind of hurt that a little bit. So yeah. Well, uh, when you put it up, invite us to the events. We'll go to any events you have. I love doing follow-up stories. Um, we got we to gotta shut this segment down. We're running it. My, my producer's giving me that. But Ross, thanks for coming on, man. What yeah. a what a great story! And Thank New you. Mexico, uh, yeah. born and bred, and you know we're, we're we're really proud of you. Thanks for coming on. Thank, Thank you to meet you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And that'll do it. We'll go into uh, segment three, which will not be Skip's tips. Uh, it'll be better. So see you in segment three. Hey everybody, welcome back to UABQ. That was a really cool segment with uh, Ross Anderson, man. What a cool guy. Great to meet him and the uh, charities that he's setting up, um, getting getting the word out on the skiing uh we're off to segment number three it's uh probably one of the most important topics we're going to cover in the next six months and that's going to be grants rants that's right probably the most important part in the century maybe in these last six months maybe this week get it get it in the reverse order now this grants rants is going to talk about real estate agents and now that skips at it here Cats away, the mice will play. We're going to hell in a handbasket in this episode. Okay, if you're looking for an agent, make sure it meshes with your personality. Those engineers out there, you probably want a serious cut and dry real estate agent. Sometimes people are feelers. You're gonna to wanna to go with someone that makes you feel comfortable. It depends on what your, your aptitude is and what kind of, what are you looking for out of a real estate agent. So there's, there's many personality types out there. So there's someone for everyone. And that's not even like that for agents, but in life. So don't give up people that are single. You can move on. Don't go with an agent just because it's your mom's friend or it's a neighbor. That's not how real estate works. You need to find an agent that's actually pedigreed and has a proven track record. Just because your mom knows somebody does has nothing to do with how their performance or their proficiency at their craft in real estate. So look for the people who's got a bunch of like years under their belt or have some testimony or can prove to their prior work, right? So just don't, don't, just don't get a name and then go with it. You know, interview them a little bit. Do not let a realtor have you sign a contract that makes you work exclusively with them if you're a buyer. You have the right to work with whoever you want. Don't let anyone lock you in. If they do this type of practices, they're usually immoral. Watch for that, it's a red flag. Someone asks you to sign a contract as a buyer, don't do it. Make sure you get pre-approved before buying. And I know Skip goes over this a lot but you're gonna to wanna to figure out your purchasing power. You're gonna to need to see if your credit's in line. You need to see your price range. There's no point in dragging a realtor out and, and going in, in house tours and such and, and going into a seller's house. If you're not prepared, you're a tire cooker in, in, in a window shopper and it's not fair to everyone involved. Figure out what you can do as, as for your purchasing power and figure out what you can buy. There's no point in looking for houses above your price window because comparison is a thief of joy. Once you see what's out there and then you go to your price range, you're not gonna be very happy. So just make sure to not waste people time. The one thing I do wanna bring up while I'm ranting is that you're going into people's houses and you shouldn't go into people's houses if you don't have a particular interest in buying them. Now, open houses, those are a different story. They are literally opening up their house to you. So those are okay. But I don't find it okay to just go and look through people's houses when you don't even know if you can buy those houses. So that's my mortgage brokers, grants, rants. Woo, I'm glad I got that off my chest. Uh, you know, I think I just may kick Skip's tips out of here because that was a hell of a lot more fun, grants, rants. I'll probably just complain about things I don't like in traffic and such. I probably won't promise to save any marriages like Skip's tips, but I'll leave it up to you, the audience, of what you want to see take place in the last segment. Uh, so thank you to our guest, Tom Kite. Um, it's really nice of you to fill in at such short notice. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, you know, this is uh, my second time on. It's true. We had, uh, and Cindy. he dressed in all black because he, uh, you know, was going to this funeral of a show. Uh, yeah. But it would end up turning okay. But thanks for preparing <laughs> for the worst. Well, dude, it was great. It was cool to meet uh, Ross. That guy's incredible with what he's accomplished in his life and reaching out to kids on the reservations and stuff. I think that's yeah, incredible. It's a good cause. Man, and if you guys ever do follow up with him, I'd love to, to yeah, be, be along with that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's neat. The other thing is, I'm gonna pump Tom's tires. They have a new bar opening up. Uh, before it was a uh, what steampunk theme. Now they're doing a mezcal themed. Only one in the state, I would assume. Um, their rebuild's happening, but uh, what's it gonna be called? Yeah, we're gonna call it Los Conejos. So yeah. The rabbits, it's gonna be an agave bar, so we're gonna 
have plenty of uh, uh, tequilas and agaves. And uh, yeah, we're about done with the build out. It's a little extra 800 square feet and it's gonna be a fun time. There's gonna be a DJ. On They're the gonna be, he's gonna be a DJ. That, no, you know, Tom's it. gonna be on the ones and twos and the threes and the, fours. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, what, I would say that it's the only niche mezcal bar probably in, in, in the state, wouldn't you say? Is there another one? Uh, not that I know of. I think there's some. There's a few other bars that just kind of like a side note, so yeah. to speak. But dedicated to it. But dedicated to it. What's right. fascinating within the same, I would call your your business a compound, but Tom's uh, Tom's uh, mezcal Los Conejos is going to be housed within the same uh, building with a small hallway. Totally different drink menu. Um, so you have a couple options when you walk in the door. You're going to go left or right. Choose your own adventure. Got a couple parting jokes for you guys while we're out of here. Um, what do you call a guy from Louisiana that lies a lot? Mm. Give up? Yes. A jambalaya. <laughs> the last one, uh, and, and this is actually kind of sad. Um, Tom, my, my wife and I are splitting because um, I'm too obsessed with horoscopes. I'm afraid it tore us apart. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Get the shepherd's hook. Take him out of here. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Fun, fun uh, UABQ. Uh, Skip, you will be missed. You've been replaced permanently. Sayonara. Thanks for watching.